The new Israeli tech tree in War Thunder starts with the S-199 fighter. Let's check it out. After World War II, many small nations' militaries were rebuilding almost from scratch. As a result of the difficult post-war conditions, the Avia company in Czechoslovakia put the Messerschmitt BF-109G back into production. They did this both to help get their aviation industry back into operation, and also to get a fighter, any fighter, into service quickly. They were able to do this after acquiring production plans, construction jigs, and a fairly significant supply of surplus DB-605 engines from various sources. The new plane was called the S-99. Unfortunately for them, an explosion and fire at the warehouse the engines were stored in destroyed much of the surplus, and since no new DB-605s could be found, they had to substitute the Jumo-211, the same engine as used by the HE-111 medium bomber. Further compounding the problems, the Jumo-211 was lower power, had different mounts, and critically, a different weight. The new version with the Jumo engines was called the S-199, and wasn't a great aircraft. The torque of the Jumo engine was problematic, and the center of gravity was off, which dramatically impacted the maneuverability and stability of the plane in the air. A bit south of Europe, newly independent Israel was forming an air force, and... Well, the history of Israel is a complicated topic, but suffice to say, they didn't have a lot of friends and allies in the early years, and they had to scrape together a military using whatever they could get. And what they could get included the Avia S-199. This was the Israeli Air Force's first combat aircraft, flew its first combat sorties, and scored Israel's first air-to-air -air combat victories. The S-199 only served very briefly with the IAF and was withdrawn from service as soon as summer placements were available, but it still holds an important position in the history of the Israeli Air Force. In War Thunder, the S-199 is a rank 4 fighter at BR 3.3, and this is the first plane that you can get in the new Israeli tech tree. Its armament isn't great, but once you upgrade to the 20mm cannons, things get a little better, and I suggest grinding to the cannon upgrade as a top priority. You get the full selection of ammo belts for the guns, and can carry a small loadout of bombs on a centerline rack. The loadouts are just four bombs of slightly different specs, and to be honest, they're pretty wimpy and not especially useful. In realistic battles, they just don't have enough blast radius to really do damage to regular ground targets, but they can put a little bit of a hurt on strategic base for extra points. In arcade battles, with the reload and the CCIP, you can use them to a little bit more effect, but they're still very light weapons. Now, the performance of the S-199 is, honestly, objectively bad. But an important caveat is that the performance in realistic battles is dramatically different from arcade battles. In realistic, the low engine power and the screwed up center of gravity result in a horrible rate of climb, bad acceleration, sluggish turn performance at most airspeeds, and to make matters worse, the plane overheats bad in WEP and it bleeds energy like a stuck pig. So in prolonged fights, you have almost no way to get the upper hand. The majority of kills I got in this plane in RB were due to pilot errors from, you know, the people I was fighting against. And the only advantage the plane has is that, really, because its energy retention is so bad, people will overshoot you pretty frequently. But, since you have almost no energy in those situations, you're probably only going to have a very brief window to take a shot. So don't miss. Now, in arcade battles, as with most planes, the flight model is a lot more forgiving, and it's much easier to whip around in a furball and get kills. Just remember that this experience is not going to carry over into RB. 
Flying the S-199 into missions is pretty basic mid-tier prop fighter stuff. But, remembering that the performance of this plane is so low, you kinda have to fly it like a low-tier plane that got up-tiered by the matchmaker, and just hope for the best. You probably don't want to bother with the bombs. They're too wimpy, and they hurt your flight performance, which wasn't great to begin with. And really, trying to find an opportunity to use them is just going to be a distraction from air combat, which is supposed to be the plane's role. In arcade battles, you can just jump into the furball and do your thing. Same as, you know, most other planes like this. But in realistic, my suggestion is to try and side climb as best you can before engaging. The challenge is that the climb performance is so bad you might still be in your side climb and find a P-38 or something diving in on you from above. So don't AFK out. You need to be on alert even during your initial climb. This plane's performance limitations really handcuff your mission profiles, and I'll say very honestly that I didn't like flying this plane at all, because it felt like my success or failure was dependent on my opponents screwing up rather than on my own abilities or the mission objectives. Overall, it'll be a challenge to set up successful RB missions with the S-199. Now this plane is, at least in my opinion, one of the planes that looks better on the ground than it flies in the air. I like the look of this one, and the paint job with the red nose cone is great. You can get a couple of other skins as well, but honestly, I prefer the default one. Now, landing the 199 is tricky. This is a tail dragger with a screwed up center of gravity. So if you jam on the brakes after touching down, you're gonna nose over very quickly and crash. The secret is to tap your brakes very deliberately and very, like, quickly, just quick little taps. And the instant you notice your tail even dreaming about lifting up, let go of the brakes. This extends your landing run quite a bit, but it's kind of your only option, so practice it a bit in some test flights. Now, the narrow undercarriage also means that you can't really fishtail or anything to work off extra speed, because you're pretty likely to tip over. Ugh. The cockpit, well, it, it's a basic 109 cockpit. The visibility is pretty average, the instruments are okay, and the gun sight is easy to use. The bracing gets in the way sometimes, and the rearward visibility isn't good, but it wasn't as bad as I was expecting in VR. Overall, it's an average 109 cockpit. To close out on the Avia S199, this plane has acceptable cannons with good ammo belts after you upgrade to the 20mm guns. However, the center of gravity is all wrong, which cripples the plane's maneuverability in most situations. Its climb rate is horrible. The landing is incredibly difficult, and it's not especially fast in the top end. Plus, its bombs are basically trash. The final verdict on the S199 is that flying this plane out will give you some serious appreciation and respect for the bravery and skill of the Israeli Air Force pilots who managed to actually be successful with this thing. However, just like the Israeli Air Force, you should probably dump this for a Spitfire as soon as you can. As always, thanks for watching.